Uh, I would like uh, to emphasize here uh, that in this uh, and some other areas, we do also have projects uh, under our current framework programs. Uh, and uh, I would like to encourage everyone, uh, in fact, to look at what has been already done there, the projects that are ongoing and um, that calls that are open uh, in order to avoid overlap. So uh, to address under this particular topic uh, the real needs um, of the industry uh, and the need uh, for uh, establishing the biobanks, uh, making accessible um, the stem cell lines uh, from different ethnicities and patients with defined uh, phenotypes and genotypes and so on and so forth, while not uh, duplicating the work that has been done uh, somewhere else. Uh, this is true not only for this particular topic, but from some uh, of the first topics that I uh, presented, the ETRIX, uh, the IMIF. So uh, please be careful and look exactly at what are the calls that are open out, out there for the framework program uh, and apply with the appropriate project in the appropriate um, structure, either here in IMI, if your uh, project um, in fact fits uh, what uh, the call topic, uh, or in our calls, if that would fit better of what you would like to do. <coughs> Finally, understanding and optimizing binding kinetics uh, in drug discovery. Um, here, uh, obviously, the goal is to have an improved understanding of interaction of small molecules with protein targets. Um, this uh, uh, is uh, obviously uh, an area of a lot of interest. Uh, we all would like to have a better understanding uh, of how this binding kinetics is working uh, and, in fact, uh, adapting uh, what we are doing uh, to, to the reality uh, of uh, the mechanism. So uh, the topic is focused on binding kinetics, but attention, it may be expanded to future to uh, uh, think big topic, to understand the critical factors that drive molecular interactions and how they correlate to processes involved in, in drug action. So uh, here, uh, we believe that there is a, a need for broad-ranging public-private partnership uh, encompassing structural, biophysical, uh, um, pharmacological, both in vitro and in vivo, uh, and chemical fields. So we are looking forward uh, of these very exciting new collaborations. Um, by the way, uh, we do see that this is the first time uh, that information generated in this project will become available for use in research. Uh, for e so uh, even if you are interested only in mechanistic aspects uh, of these projects, uh, and it's still worth it to participate uh, in uh, this IMI project. Very briefly, uh, from our perspective, what is the outlook for the future IMI calls? Uh, we do believe that the future IMI calls will lead uh, to committing significant funding, and this is good. Uh, more money uh, means that uh, more of you, the academics, the small and medium enterprise partners, uh, will find uh, this collaboration very appealing. Um, more think big topics uh, would be uh, in the area of pharmacogenetics and taxonomy of disease. Uh, as well of, as rare diseases and stratified therapies, uh, which are highly promising areas. Uh, under uh, this particular uh, aspect, I would like also, also to emphasize that in our current uh, work program, so the work program 2012, uh, which has been pre-published as an orientation paper, and you can find it online on our site, we already have uh, some uh, significant topics uh, addressing rare diseases um, and taxonomy in particular, but not only, um, uh, also as a basis for stratified therapies. Uh, so uh, we do welcome these uh, think big topics, and we hope that that would build uh, on the projects uh, that by then uh, will already be ongoing from uh, our uh, framework program.
Uh, we do also uh, hope that additional models for expanding EMIF to be launched. So just a word about the complementarity because um, I've mentioned it at the beginning, but I think that it's good to mention it one more time. Uh, most topic in the call uh, about to be launched address research areas that are not addressed in uh, health team or other areas of, of FP7. So please read them carefully. Uh, topics on the stem cells need to take, uh, and some uh, of the EMIF, as I've mentioned before, need to take into account the significant investment already made in projects uh, at the EU uh, and national level. And uh, again, for the areas going forward, pharmacogenetics and taxonomy of human disease, uh, co complementary to public efforts uh, on genomic medicine, including this large international consortia that we are setting up or they have been set up, uh, will have to be taken into account. Um, and last but not least, um, as I was mentioning, uh, these rare disease and stratified therapies are not going to benefit only from European funding. Uh, but together with our colleagues from the NIH, uh, from the Canadian I Institute of Health Research, uh, from Australia, from Spain, uh, from other countries, uh, we are in the process of setting up uh, an international rare disease research consortium. Uh, so funding opportunities in these areas will arise from other funding agencies. And as you know, um, foreign um, scientists can participate uh, in our framework program uh, projects and vice versa. So uh, if you are working in these areas, I would encourage you to look also at the other agencies that will open calls uh, in this area of rare diseases and stratified therapies. Um, and here you have um, uh, the, the, if you want the funding members, um, it's too small to see everyone there, uh, but I have mentioned some of the agencies that are already participating. So uh, with this uh, overview, uh, I would like just to um, say that we are very excited uh, about the topics that have been put forward. Uh, we do think that they will bring a considerable added value uh, versus what has been done before. Uh, and we hope that in the future we will see much more of these um, very big thinking topics uh, that you will need to respond to and take forward. Thank you very much. I can take a couple of Thank questions. Thank you very much, uh, Rixandra. Perhaps while you prepare the presentation of our next speaker, uh, Rixandra can answer a few questions. Yeah. Yes? Please uh, speak up and identify yourself before asking this question. Okay, I am uh, Dr. Maria uh, from Switzerland. Uh, I would like to ask you if uh, it will be, as in the previous call, a very narrow spectrum of the, uh, of the person participated in the call. Does mean if you are not really in the, uh, in the center of the title of the topic, you are rejected. For example, stem cells, uh, the stem cells project is very good, but we have the stem cells everywhere. And we, sh we uh, can not regenerate it, it, these stem cells in tissue because it is a problem. The stem cells, uh, even in the artery, of the, uh, uh, which are removed in the bypass, does mean that it is not the problem of the stem cells itself, but is the problem of the regeneration of the stem cells. And I have a method which, which can regenerate the stem cells in tissue. Uh, we don't need any transplantation. And it will be very helpful if such a project is accepted for the stem cells. I am not working on the stem cells itself, but I am working how to regenerate the stem cells in situ, without transplantation. Thank you. So what I would encourage you to do is to actually read the topic very carefully. 
um, uh, and see if the project actually uh, addresses the issues that, for instance, the safety elements and using in silico methods for, uh, uh, for safety, uh, using the stem cells uh, are quite different than what you have mentioned. So uh, um, this is a, a comment that relates not only for this particular topic, but for the topics uh, in general. Uh, I think that uh, you really need, 